Kia ora koutou and welcome back to NZ Clever Home. If you want to get serious about home automation, then you're going to need to know about Home Assistant. Home Assistant is the bee's knees when it comes to home automation. And if you want to be like me and have all of your appliances work in the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, but you don't want to pay the Apple HomeKit prices, then you're going to need Home Assistant. So let's take a closer look at what that is. Home Assistant is a free software platform that uh, you are able to link smart devices to and control those devices and set up all sorts of automations and triggers, uh, etc, etc. It is 100% free. It's managed and developed by a community of uh, software developers, computer scientists, and things like that. So it's 100% free to use, download, and install. Now you can pay a subscription to link your Home Assistant appliances with uh, Amazon Alexa or with Google Home. Um, but if you're happy to use Home Assistant by itself, then there's no cost at all. In fact, the way I use it is I push my or expose my Home Assistant appliances to Home Kit, uh, and that's completely free. Home Assistant has a whole bunch of what they call components. So you can add uh, specific components to your Home Assistant instance, and then those Home Assistant will then control the devices linked to that component. Now, there's a lot of terminology with Home Assistant, and as you engage in the process, you'll you'll often say to yourself, "Well, what does that mean? What's that? What's that? What's an instance?" And that was one of the things I found difficult at the beginning is learning that terminology. But with tenacity and patience and continuing to uh, investigate, you will find that things start to become more clear as you go along. Essentially, Home Assistant is a home automation platform. So you've got your uh, your Amazon Alexa, that's one platform. You've got Google Home, that's another platform. You've got Apple HomeKit, that's another platform. And Home Assistant falls into that same category. But arguably, Home Assistant is the most customizable. Uh, it's the cheapest. Uh, it's widely used across the world. Uh, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of videos on YouTube about how to use Home Assistant, how to set it up. There are dedicated uh, chat rooms and channels that you can go to to get support for Home Assistant. Uh, and I found that there are a lot of people out there who are really eager to help you um, and will will go step by step on how to do things. Um, in my case, I did have um, a tech friend available when I first started in Home Assistant who um, had a lot of knowledge and was able to kind of guide me in that direction. And, and I definitely found that really useful. Um, but that knowledge and that help is available out there if you don't have that on your doorstep. Um, the great thing about Home Assistant is that it's uh, you can get an Android or... Uh, well, no, you can't get an Android app. You can get an iOS companion app, but you can access it via any web browser uh, in your on your network or outside of your network. So if you're overseas, for example, you can still control your home automation appliances via the uh, user face, the web user face UI user interface yeah via the web user interface see i told you lang the language that is used is is a whole new world to me but i'm getting there so let's have a look at what my home assistant instance looks like so this is my home assistant instance this is my uh uh front end as it's called in in the jargon uh and these are all the components that i have uh, set up in my Home Assistant. Now this is a fairly simplistic setup. Uh, when you go on YouTube you'll see that everyone has their own kind of customizable uh, interface. Um, I just use glance cards. Some people have you know floor plans of their house and they have their devices uh, identified in the floor plan. Um, I just use this. 
this setup for me because of course my main focus is home kit so i don't tend to spend a great deal of time customizing a home assistant so here are the components that i have this card here is my ring doorbell uh, and it has uh, individual functions so this will tell me when the door was last there was last motion at the door this will tell me when the door was last the doorbell was last rung this will give me um a snapshot of the last people through uh this here will tell me when there was last motion and this here tells me when the battery the battery level of the current ring uh, this here is uh, my tracking. So my home assistant is linked up with my Life360 account. If you don't know what Life360 is, I, uh, I suggest that you look into it um, either on App Store or Google Play. It's an amazing uh, GPS tracking device. So these are the people in my circle and I can link my Life360 account with Home Assistant. So if I go to the map, for example, you'll see that my mum is currently, oh, she's currently in Rotorua. Um, and then the other people that I follow um, this over here are our keys and wallets. So this is linked to tile, you know, the little tiles that you can buy in Harvey Norman or Noel Leeming. Uh, you can link those with your home assistant. So you can see that all of our keys and my wallet are at home right now. Uh, these are all our lights grouped. So they're not, I mean, this is all of our lights here. Um, I don't know what's going on with that one. That one's not available right now. But I've grouped those lights um, into groups and I can just click on a button, for example, the office, and that will turn the office light on. Um, and if I clicked on uh, kitchen or lounge or family, it would turn all the lights in that room. Uh, these are the switches I have. So the garage door and the office fan. Uh, this is the media control, so the sound bar, the lounge TV, um, and my smart IR configuration, which I'll talk more about in a minute. That's my favorite thing on Home Assistant at the moment. Um, these are some old climate controls that I used to use before I set up smart IR. Um, so I don't really use those anymore. So in fact, I might get rid of those soon. Uh, this is my smart IR climate control for the family room. Um, which is, as I've said, my favorite thing. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. Let me just move the screen over here. This is the other devices that I track. So um, if we just click on it, it will tell you what they are. This is my um, time capsule. This is uh, my iPad. This is uh, Cam's iPad. And all of these devices that I track. So currently, uh, my MacBook Pro is away, which is strange because I'm using it right now. So I don't know why that's not coming up. Um, and the PlayStation is away. That's because it's not switched on. Um, so yeah, those are the devices that I track and that's through a Wi-Fi tracker. Um, and this is the bedroom, uh, smart IR that I've got set up. So this controls the bedroom heat pump. Um, along the top here, I've put some rooms. Again, this was, you know, this is fairly old, this config. Um, this was back when I was really into Home Assistant. And of course, now I'm, I focus more on HomeKit. So some of these, to, some of the devices might not show up here or they are uh, controls that I no longer use. Um, and then automations and climate controls. So that is essentially the main part of Home Assistant. Then you have things like the map, logbook, uh, history, um, and then some, uh, this is where you can add some add-ons and specific components. So, um, you know, you can see there that I've got Samba Show and I've got Configurator. Uh, these are, um, these are more detailed things that you can add in. But this one, the configurator, this is where all the magic happens. This is where you uh, create all of your instructions. You add all of your devices, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is the most difficult part for Home Assistant, is learning how to control this file. And it's called your configuration.yaml file. Everything that exists in here is what uh, exists in your front end. So all of these things here correspond to some form of code that exists 
in this file here. And it's learning how to do this that is the most time consuming part of Home Assistant. So you see here, this is my HomeKit config. These are the entities that are excluded from my HomeKit. I don't push those down. And these are the entities that I do include. So these entities here, they don't talk with HomeKit out of the box. This is why I have Home Assistant. I connect them to Home Assistant and then push them down to HomeKit. These devices here, they all talk to Home Assistant, uh, HomeKit out of the box. So that's why I don't re-push them down to HomeKit because they're already there. Oh, what am I doing? Um, and then further down, these are all the separate switches that I have set up, uh, some old uh, media that I have set up, uh, and then things like device trackers. So you'll see here, here's my Life360. Uh, that's what all those... Um, that's what those people were. This is uh, those tiles that you can see, so wallets and keys. Uh, here's my ring set up. Um, and this is my Smart IR. And it's at the bottom because it's the newest thing that I've done. And Smart IR is incredible. If you have a Broadlink RM Mini 3, um, and I have done a video on those recently, uh, which are dirt cheap with the Smart IR, uh, config, you can turn those tiny little devices into masters. Um, you could, for example, you can take an old TV and make it an Apple Kit enabled TV using the Smart IR. Um, you can take older heat pumps and make them smart. It is a fantastic uh, component to have. I will show you. So if I take you to um, Home Assistant's components page, this is where you can, these are all the things that Home Assistant will work with. Now that doesn't look like a lot because they're grouped together. But for example, um, if I searched HomeKit, they, it will show you all of the HomeKit things that you can do with it. Now, this is where you'll find all of the, all of the components that match your devices. There are other things as well that are not. See, I don't think SM ARC. I don't think Smart IR will will appear on here. No, because it's it's not a component. It is a it's something else. I don't know the terminology. My bad. But I'll take you to it now. The page. This is Smart IR. So it is a custom component. Um, and as you can see, you've got Smart IR Climate, Media Player, and Fan. I have the top two installed, and they are amaze balls. So in order to make Home Assistant work, it needs to run off something. It needs to run off some form of computer. And that computer needs to be on all the time, particularly if you want access to uh, your devices outside of your network. Um, now, I run my home assistant on a small Raspberry Pi. If you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, you can Google it. It's a tiny little computer. It costs 30 bucks uh, that you can set up and it will run all of the all of the difficult computery sciencey stuff in the background for you. Um, I've got my Raspberry Pi of AliExpress. Um, I've got a Raspberry Pi uh, 3B, um, which is no longer the latest version. They've just released a Raspberry Pi 4 in the last month or so, but the Raspberry Pi 3 is still more than adequate to run this. Um, and I just plug it into my modem via Ethernet cable and you have an SD card in the Raspberry Pi, which runs all the software and it's super simple. So in order to set up Home Assistant, you would visit their, uh, their web page. So, and you will go get started. And here will tell you all the steps that you need in order to, to set Home Assistant up. And you literally go through step by step by step. And you will download uh, the, all the files. 
you will put those files onto an SD card, then put your SD card into your Raspberry Pi, turn it on, let it do its thing, and then Home Assistant is set up. And it tells you step by step what to do next, how to, you know, add things, uh, how to start creating some automations, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And, you know, there's, there's no limit to what you can do. And as you can see, there are videos dotted out all over the place. You go onto YouTube, you'll find loads of videos on Home Assistant. Um, and it's just really, it's just an amazing platform for something that's free um, and so versatile and you can do so much with it. Um, so I know I've kind of gone on and on and on about it and I've, I've, I've blurted on a lot and there's a lot of information to dissect there. But if you are eager to get into the home automation space, uh, then I strongly suggest you check out Home Assistant. Um, I will happily answer any questions that I can give from my limited experience. I can also point you in the direction of anyone else who might be able to help you. Discord is, make that your new best friend. I go on there and bother everybody all the time. Hey, how do you do this? And someone will come back to you with an answer. Um, but I strongly recommend it. And if, like I said at the beginning, if you're like me and you want a complete home kit, uh, automation system, but you're not quite prepared yet to spend the money on uh, devices that work with HomeKit out of the box, then this is a great way of doing that by bridging the gap, adding them to Home Assistant and then connecting Home Assistant to HomeKit and having all those devices work together. If you have any questions, flip me an email here. Otherwise, please subscribe to the channel. Kakite anō!